Alrighty, just having a look at uh, my model again for COVID in Australia. We're sitting on the 28th. This line over here, 28 days. I'm counting from the 1st of March. Official cases, 3378. I uh, was predicting 3567, so I'm in with 5% today. I was out by 2% yesterday, so it's tracking within 5%. So by that rationale, tomorrow will be around this number. Um, these are the numbers we're getting of cases. This is cases, looking at victims and in terms of death. 12.4, I think it's 13 today, so it's pretty accurate in terms of deaths. So we're really early days in here. So only 12 days, it'll start ramping up according to the exponential nature of this thing. So having a look at this, so deaths is over here. So if you have a look, um, deaths. So we're right down here in day 20, 28, 28, which is about there, 12.4. By day 30, so the end of this month, the 30th of March, it'll be 17. And you can see it very rapidly cranks up um, this hill here. Now, there's a few caveats to this um, in terms of debts. So that's purely, hugely dependent on the social measures. So over here, we've got our social measures. Um, so we have our crowd or herd immunity kicking in as we go through the cases here, which gives some natural immunity, but it's very early days here, as you can see, 0.005% of the total of people affected um, in this column. So I'm saying that for the measures from the last few weeks, um, it's about 30%, but I'm saying by the 1st of April, it'll be a 60% reduction um, just by social measures, just in things that we implement here in Australia, which will make a big difference in the um, in the cases. So the normal rate is, was going at 0.2, but I'm saying with the social measures that we put in place, um, they start kicking in over here. So there's a lag. The reason why it's using this variable over here is because it's um, lagged by 14 days. So I'm saying any social measures, you won't see the result of that for 14 days. So by the time it kicks in, I think when we get quite heavy, I'm predicting that by April, it'll drop from 20 um, uh, R naught of, of 2 to 0 0.13. Um, and this is the greatest. Who knows what happens with this number, um, how effective the social measures are. But um, let's have a look at the chart here. The, the big things are this hospital beds. Now, if you have a look here, we've got 60,000 beds and we've only got 2,229 ICU beds in Australia. So I'm saying that the total in hospital for the day is the sum of the last, because the average uh, read that 15 days in hospital is the average. So in any one day, the amount of ho in the hospital, so I'm guessing, I haven't looked this up, but the amount of people in hospital right now would be around 600 people in Australia requiring hospital attention. Um, and I would say that this is the ICUs. 33 of those would be in ICU in the whole of Australia right now. So if you look down here, we first hit the limit of ICU beds. 5% of people needing hospital require ICU, and we've only got this many beds. 16th of May, people who are requiring ICU are going to be in deep trouble. And by a few days later, we'll hit the maximum number of beds. So this is when it really peaks up. All right, so that's where this line, we've got hospital beds here. Um, and that's when this curve will hit the limit around day 70, day 80. 
day 80 for me is day 80 down here is yes around day 81 may 20th now that means the social measures right now of course i don't think this is going to happen because we're going to get more strict with our social measures so 60 is not going to cut it i've got it 60 is not going to cut it so what we're going to have is it's going to be much more drastic than that so what we're going to have is we're trying to push this curve out longer because the way it will be going by day here it's all, we're all done and dusted by 150 days from now but there'll be massive amounts of people affected without um, hospital beds so if we have a look we what will happen is more more strict measures we'll go from a 0.6 so you can see what will happen to these beds so we get stronger measures let's say people locked in their houses 90% reduction all right so if you put 90 over here so there's about two weeks of locked in the house it pushes down a little bit then we could relax it a little bit to 0.6 the point measures we have currently and again we could implement another 90 percent measures for a little while again that'll push that the numbers down then we could release again so these people requiring hospital are all getting attention icu beds now if we did that that's now into june so we've got a period of back to 60 percent reduction and we're starting to get some effects of crowd immunity here, only 1.2%, but it's a, it has an effect. So again, maybe over a week of relax, where people can just get out a little bit, 90%. And we're going to lose this war eventually. Again, that's now not making this the volume of people. And this is like even a reduction of, we're sitting at 0 0.07 here. Um, 0 0.01 with the full measures um, 0 0.01 that's a, it's a massive attenuation of the normal rate of infection and it's still we can't handle the numbers we just peak over in this area we're just peaking over hospital beds in general around June so what we're seeing is here see all of these enforcements are causing it to drag out this direction but you still got this massive hump here that you have to so the numbers that may not be 100 percent correct but you can see the effect is it's either short um and let this virus sweep across the nation but have massive amount of impact on people's lives or you just has to draw out over a very long period so let's just keep on playing this game of playing with the variable we can control is the social aspect of this and i'm i'm predicting i'm guessing 90 percent reduction each time we're in um, lockdown um so time will tell if that's that will work and then when we're not locked down it goes to a 60 percent reduction so it's quite extreme 90 90 90 um and i just don't know how we can reduce the lockdown when we've still got people in over capacity so that will have to continue would have to continue let's keep on pushing it down right so here these people will be in trouble who are just pushing over the limit of the bed limit of 229 so maybe up to close to 800 people not getting ICU beds over this period close to three four thousand people not getting um, hospital beds um, now I'm sure there might be some makeshift hospital beds in certain areas I know that we're working on that but this is we're working off 60,000 beds but we've got here look at this this is now maybe three four weeks of of lockdown completely over the big hump here so let's relax it up over here so let's just start 
Backing back to 60, let's see what happens. No, then it comes back over here again. Now you've got another problem. But you can see this, what this is now doing is you've got periods of of trying to keep everything above the line. So we're going to just draw it out. So the, the paradox here is the huge impact to everyone and the economy versus saving people's lives. Now, I say that, I make some other assumptions here, is that the normal mortality is 4 Four percent, and I'm making a very modest. I'm just making an assumption. When we're over capacity, it goes to five percent. So it's only an extra one percent of death, based on lack of hospital beds. Now I'm guessing that it'll be worse than that. It would be more than just one percent. Um, the people requiring uh, ventilators, for example. So this max out, and we're getting some big numbers here. Now. Let's keep on playing this 90-60 game. 90-60-90 again. Right, so... No, that starts hard to make a difference. 60... 90... for a long period here. Right, you can see it's just very difficult to do in actuality. So this is several periods of extreme lockdown and it, it keeps popping back up regardless of what you do. Um, by this stage we've got 28% crowd immunity that'll have a huge effect. So even at 60% measures we've also helped by 28 crowd immunity um, leading to a reduction in by 94 percent in transmission so down to 0 0.02 um, which will come into effect down here here very small transit and this is what you will see in the curve here so if we go back and have a look at the curve all these staggering um, numbers is we're drawing it out, but there's less people above the line now. These humps are being drawn out, and the effects will be much lower because of because of that. But you know, look, people affected deaths, total deaths is this yellow line. We're talking some big numbers here. So if you look at the death line, So let's just put, put a, plug a few numbers. So 5,000. First 5,000 deaths, 21st of May, using these extreme measures. First 25,000, 30,000 deaths by June 27. But if we could play this forward, 100,000 deaths, 18th of August, using these measures. If we did nothing, it would be catastrophic. But you can see here that this starts to plateau people affected um, over these periods when we've shut down. So 2 million people, 4% death. These numbers seem to be matching out and these mimicking what we're seeing elsewhere in the world. So if I undo some of these changes, um, this death toll is up to half a million people. Um, but um, the key thing is not to get into this key area of death rate. Um, I hope you found this useful.